Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul connecting with you today, Thursday. And we're getting close to tax season when we have to turn everything in here in Hawaii or in America, April 15th. So I guess that makes today the 11th or 12th. I should probably pay a little closer attention. But in any case, I'm happy to see you and glad, glad that you're joining me today. It's 9 a.m. here in Hawaii, working on my new time schedule with doing these live streams. And uh, hopefully I'm able to work with your time frame as well. It's been a bit uh, crazy this week for me as I've been adjusting to a new schedule, assisting my, my wife and assisting with her... Um, farmer's market business. So that's been a little crazy. Switch out microphones here. That should make this sound uh, a little bit better, I hope. Maybe the same. But anyway, I was up late last night, up early again today, learning how to run a restaurant business. But that has nothing to do with advancing our intuition, which is today's subject matter. What can we do, what kind of practices can we do to increase or improve our intuition? So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So I look forward to serving you. And please share and let other people know about this. So thank you to everyone that's joining. We're going to wait a little bit longer. It's Thursday and it's 9 a.m. in Hawaii. Normally I start at 2, so not as many people are joining yet. And so Facebook has to go out and gather some friends. So when I was thinking about the subject matter for today, um, it came up actually as a result of talking with a different uh, student. And uh, they were talking about you know, how they can increase or open their spiritual channels more. And I was kind of laughing because <clears throat> um, I remember doing, for example, soul readings, which is a form of intuition. It's receiving information. I remember actually... Uh, not really wanting to to do it. I just wanted to offer healing blessings to people. And um, but heaven had their own plans. And they kept sending me people that only wanted soul readings. I did not want to do soul readings. I only wanted to do healing uh, because when you do soul readings, you 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 create karma if you offer incorrect information. I didn't want that experience. So, um, but. The long, story, the long story short was that uh, they were asking me about how to increase their abilities to connect to heaven. And I said, basically, you just have to do a lot of practice. But there are some shortcuts, and I'm going to share some of those with you today. So let's check in with who's joined us. <clears throat> so welcome, Heather Houston. Aloha, Christina Walker. Welcome also to um, Heather Rausman and Rawita. Aloha. Welcome also, Angela Diacomo. Aloha Zilki, aloha to Dr. Sunil, welcome also to Monica, aloha Nirma, great to see you here Nirma, welcome Catherine O'Shea and Kathy Arnold, aloha, welcome Maria Sorsky, or Sor Sorsi, um, aloha to Sharon Dodd and Ingeborg, welcome Dimple. And welcome also to Julia Abbott. Welcome, Dean. Welcome, Debbie Garcia. Aloha to everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for clicking on the share button, letting other people know about today's practices for developing our intuition. So in this course, excuse me, in this uh, live stream, there are many things that you might find me repeating but one of the wisdoms I've learned from Master Shah is that if he repeats something, it's because at the soul level he understands that it needs to be repeated. People have not grasped it at the level it needs to be grasped. <clears throat> and so, uh, I, I believe that even though some things I will share today may be a repeat, it will serve you well in the long haul. So why we wait for Facebook to gather more souls, let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, placing our hands in soul light, Soul service hand position, which is a prayer position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center. And I will invite in the beings of light and connect. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, our beloved creator, 
our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints. Dear the soul of the sun, the moon, our beloved Mother Earth, the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, we love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate you, and we ask for your presence here today. We ask for your blessings, guidance, wisdom, and any service that you're able or willing to offer. We're extremely grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the soul of all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascendant masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas. Beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu, beloved Kuan Yin, all beings of light, mentioned and unmentioned, serving the planet of the light side, we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you. We ask most humbly for your presence today as well to assist with this guidance, teaching, wisdom, and blessings. And whatever way is most appropriate, we truly cannot bow to you enough for your service to humanity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls and all universes, please turn on. Please gather souls from all over humanity, all over all universes, to chant love, peace, and harmony, to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. So let us connect. Chant one round of love, peace, and harmony. And then we will move into today's wisdom. Let us begin. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Lula, li, lula. O I was in her ling. O I to run, run lay. Wang li, ying rung. Her musher shung. Shung I ping on a she. Xiong I ping on a sea. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Always amazed at how many souls gather when I chant this song. The room fills up so many souls. Beautiful. So, welcome also to uh, Eva Karif. Welcome, Debbie Garcia. Aloha, Janice. Welcome, um, Carl Decker. Uh, Kari Decker, excuse me. Welcome, Debbie. Welcome, Laranda. Uh, Aloha, Pat. And Lisa Zarniak. Welcome, Elizabeth Carrasco. Welcome, Shirley Schuster. And Callista. Welcome, Aloha. Thank you for your nice comments. Aloha, Lisa and uh, Pamela. Welcome also to Peggy. Aloha, Mike. And Jennifer Hulin. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Today, how to develop and do specific practices for developing intuition. Well, it starts with understanding what is intuition. There are certainly many different definitions for it. So the definition I'll share with you may or may not be one that resonates with you. But my understanding of intuition is information from the source. And what is the source? It could be our soul. Our soul is an aspect of the source. What about our individual heavens teams? Are our individual heavens teams aspect of the source? Yes. What about uh, God, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna? Uh, are they aspects of the source? Yes. Uh, so if you said uh, in information from the source is intuition, that would mean information from all souls. Well, what if 
that information came from souls that were not of the light side. That does happen and happens more than you'd like to think. <clears throat> we have to be careful because intuition uh, is only as good as the source, <laughs> so to speak. And so we want to purify our souls, hearts, minds, and bodies to ensure that our information is positive, beneficial, and accurate. And this subject matter has come up with the teachings that Master Shah has given us, and he's been asked directly, how can we be sure the information is valuable and accurate? And his response has never changed. He says, is the information beneficial? Is it helpful? Is it delivered with kindness and love? Is it information that is serving you? He says sometimes you have to be careful because it can come disguised. Uh, if, it's, if it's information that is coming from a source that is not of the light side, um, and it might come in as an ego kind of information, like you are amazing, you are, you know, the most beautiful person out there. Um, now, if it's in context with uh, other sentences that allow you to be a loving kind of person, uh, that don't uplift and uh, push your ego, then it probably is a beautiful message. But keep an eye on them because when our ego is massaged, um, very often it's so we go down the ego road and then we make a mistake. And so, when we look at what is intuition, according to what I've come to understand, it is messages from the source. And these messages come in many different ways and we can do things to enhance the ability to receive clear messages and more of them. And so all of us have various levels of intuition. We've had it since we were born and most likely it's, it's went through ebbs and flows of effectiveness, ebbs and flows of um, higher or lesser quality uh, of intuition. Why does that occur? Well, it boils back to some baseline foundational teachings. Let's see, I want to acknowledge a few other folks that have popped in here. Welcome Candy Cornette. Aloha Silvar Thakur. Welcome Lutzia. Aloha Don Brown and Lisa Patterson. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> so, You know, and I've said this before, as I said, I, re I do repeat some things, but it's important because you might hear a whole new gem in the same sentence. We are first and foremost a soul. We are not this physical body. I am not this guy named Paul. You are not Debbie, Lisa, whatever the names are, right? You are a soul having a physical experience. In a previous experience, if you believe in more than one lifetime, you were not called the same name you are now. We are an ego. We are a personality. So we are a soul first before we come in. That being the truth for most of us, um, we must recognize that being a soul first is, is what we are, literally the 99.9%. .9%. The 1%, which makes up the matter of this physical experience, feels as real as the 99%, but unfortunately, it's not as real as the 99.9% .9 soul that we are. We just think this is the all, the it, and the everything, and we live in it as such. And this is for this uh, end result called experience, which is part of the collective whole. But along the way, we can get lost. What causes us to get lost? The spiritual virtue and the spiritual debts, the karma, if you will. And so, what is intuition? Intuition is the information from source, from our, what is source? Source is all things connected to source. Both light and dark, remember, are all connected to source. So we want the information, the intuition, to come from light side places, like our soul, like our heaven's team, like Jesus and Buddha and Mother Mary and God. That's where we want our intuition to come from. So we must clean out our um, ego aspects, our physical body aspects, emotional, mental, spiritual body aspects in such a way through practices that allow the information to come through and not be encumbered. What is the encumberment? Mindsets, attitudes, negative beliefs, ego. Okay, we just covered that. Um, 
when our mind is overly busy, when our heart is not pure and clear, when we have anger, when we have greedy thoughts, when we have perspectives that are judgmental and critical, do you think that you're going to get a pure message from the soul world if you harbor or hold on to these kinds of blockage-based energetics? <clears throat> this, you know, it's, it really is kind of common sense. You know, how do you improve your intuition? You have to basically um, release these kinds of uh, perspectives. Now, you can sit down and listen to uh, one of the uh, well-known monks out there or the Dalai Lama or any of these, these great, <coughs> um, what would you call them, orators that for the majority of their life sit on a mountain and meditate. And when they sit in a room, they speak very slowly, very clearly, very succinctly, just think like this, just do like this. But in the real world that we're out here running around and getting our tail kicked, <clears throat> sometimes it's not so easy. So we need to do things that allow for intuition to work even when we're operating in this, quote, real world. It's not the real world, but it certainly feels that way and sometimes it can, it can make it difficult. How then do we increase our intuition in this environment? We have an energy body that is uh, surrounded with matter. Energy body is our soul, soul body. And the matter carries a lot of blockages. So when we can have chi flow between our energy and our matter, then we have less blockages. When you're in pain, for example, it's hard to uh, hear clear messages because your, your mind is being taken in a certain direction. When you have irritation, it's hard to hear clear messages because you're being taken in a certain direction. So we want to be able to realistically bring some control measures to our emotional suffering, our mental imbalances, and our physical imbalances, such that we'd be able to hear the messages clearly from heaven, from the source. Any meditation-based practices, well, there's, there's multiple um, <clears throat> bullet points to increase your intuition. <clears throat> so, first one, any meditation-based practice will assist you with increasing your intuition. It's kind of common sense, kind of obvious. Most of us have difficulty with that, even just quietening the mind. So let's do bullet point A, B, C under meditation. <clears throat> How then do we get to a quiet place if meditation is not one of the easiest things for us? Number one, find a piece of music that puts you in a relaxed state. Okay? One that consistently does. Typically, uh, I recommend one of any of Master Shah's pieces of music. You may or may not resonate with his voice or any, even the music, but that's not why I recommend it. I recommend it because it carries a very high heavenly based frequency. And when we are going to that frequency, it's very easy for us to go into a state of emptiness or nothing. It's much easier than the typical 15 to 20 minutes where we, we watch our breath and we go through these steps of trying to uh, disconnect from the mind. If you surround yourself with a higher frequency, it's very, very easy to go into emptiness and quietness. Okay? So, <clears throat> step one, in order to build towards higher intuition, Find a time to meditate about 15 minutes or so each and every day. When you find that time, surround yourself with higher frequencies, things that you know work. Set up the candles, set up the incense, bow down to your altar, to whoever is on your altar and whoever you, you honor. Um, why? Because this is part of the next step. When we connect and honor any being of light, be it Jesus, Buddha, Kuan Yin, God, Jesus, uh, 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 the Tao, whatever you resonate with, Mother Earth, doesn't matter, whatever you resonate with. When we resonate heart and soul with a higher being of light, they come. Why do they come? Because 
That is why they are a higher being of light, service. The highest path is service. The beings of light, like our beloved Jesus, like our beloved Buddhas and Krishnas and all the other very high level beings, didn't get there accidentally. They got there through service. They got there through love, through compassion, serving others unconditionally. So that doesn't change when they uh, elevate their soul standing to, to live on the other side of this the veil of the physical world we live on, they still come the moment we think of them, the moment we ask their presence, they are there. <clears throat> and it's truly a, a beautiful representation. When they come, they bring love and a higher frequency. All of these instantly impact our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual body that much more, which then allows us to be much more in alignment to receiving intuitional guidance. Now we want to be able to apply this same wisdom outside of the meditative space because we might only do that meditative space once a day if we are lucky, if we remember to do it, if we make it a priority. So how then do we bring this higher frequencies and these beings of light with us when we go outside of that meditative space? Because we want our intuition available to us all the time. This is a process of clearing the blockages in the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual body uh, on a constant basis in this thing that we call life. And it's a marathon, it's not a race. So you have to do consistent things. One of them, very simple, very, very simple, and I teach it in my advanced courses, <clears throat> is what Master Shah has taught us. Every time you eat, doesn't matter if it's a snack or a meal, Every time you drink, I'm still getting this one down. Three years, five years it's been teaching. I still don't get this second one. But the message is, each and every time you drink or eat anything, dear my beloved Creator, Jesus, Buddha, all the beings of light, please enjoy this first. How long did that take? Right? Five seconds. Why can't I do it every time? Why can't anybody do it? Because of our patterns, right? Our mind's busy, we're busy doing something else. I see food, I smell it, I shove it in my mouth. I don't stop to be in a place of gratitude <clears throat> to offer it to all those that are serving my soul journey. Trust me, there are many serving your soul journey. Of the beings of light, there are many, many, many. They are serving our soul journeys. And yet, we are in many cases completely oblivious to it. Because we're very stuck in this physical, three-dimensional drama. In order to increase our intuition, we need to do things on a consistent basis throughout the day. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me drink some water. See, I forgot again. It takes a while. It takes a while. You have to practice, practice, practice. Um... But in that connecting, please enjoy first. I love you. Thank you. And then you drink. <clears throat> and I don't mean before every spoonful, but I mean before the, the meal or before the snack. It brings us personally to a consciousness, a higher consciousness. Instantly, our heart becomes more purified. Instantly, we're surrounded by higher beings. And this creates an effect of allowing our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual bodies to be more in alignment with the source, more in alignment with that which created us. Intuition then becomes second nature. You just know, don't do that. You just know that that's the right color to choose. You just know that your sister is gonna call you. You just know. And it becomes so commonplace in your life but it's not accidental. The reason it's not commonplace in our life, or at the level maybe we would appreciate, <clears throat> is because of our lack of connection to source. So throughout the day, we must do things to further enhance that. Welcome, Margot. Welcome also, Hannah. Welcome, uh, Leon. Ileon. Welcome, Dinah Victoria. Dakota. Welcome, Nuli Rob. Aloha, Carissa Lopez. Welcome also to Celeste, Leah. Great to see you, Celeste. I hope you're hanging out. Welcome Kim Mason and M. Dao Jong and Penelope. Aloha to Elaine Midgley and Erica Rimmer. Welcome Sima uh, AJ. <coughs> Excuse me if I have not mentioned your name. Thank you for coming. Welcome. 
So now we've listed uh, a couple of things. Meditation, how to get into a deep meditative state quickly. Welcome Hannah Morse. Quickly, reminder, surround yourself with high frequency music. Okay? I do recommend Master Shah music or love peace and harmony music. Yes, of course I love my teacher. But it's a lot more than that, guys. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to. They're like, I don't know what it is. I just instantly go into a meditation when I, when I tune into that, that music. It has to do with the frequency. Same thing when you set up your environment correctly. <clears throat> Same thing when you please enjoy first. Every time we connect heart to heart. What's the next thing we can do to increase our intuition? Well, the title of this live stream is uh, How to Increase Your Intuition Through Practices. <clears throat> These are practices. These are things that you can implement in your life on a consistent basis that do make a consistent difference. Here's another thing you can do to increase your intuition. This is going to be a little left field for you. You're going to go like, really? But here's a very simple thing you can do. Be grateful. How is being grateful going to increase your intuition? <clears throat> Gratitude. Gratitude is something that most of us only show when we are in a good space and something happened that was unexpected and um, or maybe something happened that saved us or kept us from falling off a cliff, etc., etc. Gratitude is a state of mind. And when you operate in that state of mind of gratitude for all the things that are happening in your life, even those things that could easily be judged as a negative. <coughs> Excuse me. When we operate in a state of gratitude, what in essence are we doing? We are disallowing negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative thoughts. Disallowing. By that disallowance, we are naturally in a place where we can hear source messages and be guided in our intuition. When we are in a place of gratitude, we are disallowing emotional suffering. Okay? How many of us suffer emotionally in relationship, in, in our fears, in our worries, in our, in, in our uh, sadnesses, in our angers, in our, in our jealousies, right? Uh, all of these are blockages of the heart, blockages of the various parts of our emotional body. Do you think you're going to get clear guidance? Gratitude, when implemented on a conscious basis, no different than saying, thank you, please enjoy first, I love you God, thank you, blessings. No different than each and every time when we consciously reconnect to offer food, drink or water, we can choose to be grateful even for the things that normally we might judge or be critical of. Yes, it takes practice. But you know, th how long have you heard the saying, uh, find the silver lining? You can find the silver lining. You know, one of, one of the statements Master Shah uh, states, which is not exactly in alignment with this teaching, but it's very close. He says, there are three ways to say everything. There are three ways to look at everything always choose the best way. So when he says there's three ways to look at everything, what is he saying? There's, you can look at it as a negative. You can look at it as a I'm right and you're wrong and that's just how it is. You can look at it from a third way that requires us to be conscious and maybe try. How can I look at this perceived negativity as a positive? Even if all you can do is say, I can't see the positive in it now but I trust my beloved creator I trust that there is a value here that I can't see yet and I'm grateful for for experiencing what I need to experience so that I don't have to experience it again and so that I don't go down a negative path by wallowing in this negativity I'm grateful for the consciousness of that there are three ways to respond to everything so when you are being grateful you are allowing yourself to be a clear vessel because you are not inhibiting it through negativity, through uh, getting stuck in an emotional space that you would prefer not to be in. 
<coughs> it does take practice. It does take consistency. Uh, you know, the the enlightened beings <laughs> don't get there accidentally. They, you know, the the Dalai Lamas don't get there accidentally. They practice. Okay, you think that they're not upset when somebody says you're a charlatan, you're a jerk, you're an idiot, you're so full of BS, right? There are a lot of very unpleasant people that would be happy to say that to some of these high-level beings. And they're obviously very lost. But I can tell you that I have witnessed in my uh, wa watching my teacher, watching other high-level teachers, and in my own life, and you can probably vouch for this in your life, when you decide to go down a spiritual path, you will be what's called tested. Testing is a word that does not, in my opinion, correctly reflect what actually occurs. <clears throat> the, the Buddha has, has a famous statement that you know, life is suffering. Testing and suffering and all that is all about perspective. It's how do we receive the information and how do we process it and what do we do with it. So when we take the time to be grateful and offer and stay connected, we will have far less testing. Testing is heaven's way of delivering to us an experience in our life that will assist us to further open our heart and further release mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that are not serving our soul journey. That is testing. And the reason the Buddha would say something like life is suffering is because we don't see the test. We feel like, you know, we're getting beat over the head and it's, you know, what did I do wrong? But we don't go, go into it with an awareness and with gratitude. Intuition is heaven and the source saying, don't go there. Go here. This is the right thing to do. Follow this direction. <clears throat> Many of us find ourselves in the thick of things because we're unable to hear these intuitional thoughts because we're busy following the mind. Our heart is not open. We're not following the heart. We're busy doing things because we're the only ones that can do it. So I'm going to be the boss and take care of myself. And yet we fail to recognize we literally have millions and millions of light beings all around us at all times that wish and desire to serve us. We have to attune to them. So, <clears throat> these are everyday common sense practices. Now, physical world practices you can do while you're doing the spir any spiritual practices are things like heart center. Very important to do message center practices. When we open our fourth chakra, our heart uh, chakra, in Master Shah's wisdom, he calls it message center. Why does he call it message center? Just think that one through a second. Why is it called message center? <clears throat> what is intuition? Receiving messages. Where do we receive messages from? The source. What is the source? Our soul is part of the source. All the heavens teams are part of the source. All the beings of light are part of the source. So our message center is the portal through which we receive messages from heaven. A lot of people think they get it up here in their head. No. It goes through our heart way before it ever comes up to our noggin. So if our heart, welcome Naomi, welcome Donnie, anybody else I haven't mentioned you or seen you, welcome, thank you for coming. When we uh, do message center opening practices, especially if we can do it consistently, our intuition will ramp up dramatically. Our ability to hear uh, from our soul and our heaven's team could significantly increase. Our problems could significantly decrease by opening up our message center. So let's do some practices just for that. Now, <clears throat> in, in you know, Master Shah's 20 books, he, he probably has 50 different message center practices. So I try to do ones that are duplicatable and easy. But the first thing I want to do is actually tap on our message center to open it. So you'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do that tapping, and then we'll go into a different uh, uh, practice. But when we tap, it's kind of just like with a prayer, but um, we do like this on our uh, sternum area. <clears throat> and this will actually help to open our message center. You can use the 
uh, sound power as well. Ah, uh, while you're tapping, ah, uh, and we'll do this in a minute. This actually does a lot because even though the method center is a spiritual center, the physical body can be restricted around it. I've done blessings for people that, you know, they've been out of, just got a relationship and they were in significant suffering. I did a blessing uh, for their message center and their entire chest opened up, their shoulders relaxed, their neck relaxed, their back relaxed. Literally, they said, I have had pain in my neck, back and shoulders for the last three months. It's entirely gone. Where was the blockage? In the message center. The blockage was in the heart center from all the relationships suffering. So the physical body is often the, the secondary representative of a blocked heart center. Something to uh, keep in mind. Well, thank you for sharing your perspective, Naomi. I honor it. I'm very grateful that you have found something that aligns for you in, uh, in this life experience. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing. And so as we do this practice for the message center, let us open our heart to all the beings of light, to our source, to our creator. <clears throat> so close our eyes. We are going to employ the four powers, placing our hands over our heart center, dropping the left hand in front of the message center, the right hand pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes. Breathe into your lower abdomen. Bring your thoughts and your mind and your breath into your lower abdomen. Another deep breath in. And release. And we're going to connect to heaven first and then do a quick forgiveness practice that might be inhibiting us from receiving intuitional guidance. So if comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear my beloved Creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source. Dear my soul, my individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. Dear all of the beings of light who have come for this practice. I love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you. And I thank you. I thank you for being with me in the times that I am unaware. For all the times you have protected me. For all the times you have saved my life. I thank you for the times you have offered me your intuitional guidance and insights. I thank you for all the times in this and all time that you have assisted me to avoid making significant mistakes. I sincerely apologize if there have been times when I have not followed your guidance and created suffering for you or others. I sincerely apologize to my soul for making mistakes and creating greater karma on our path. I apologize to all souls in humanity and Wan Ling, all souls in all universes, for this in any lifetime that I may have created suffering or blockages on your soul journey. I deeply appreciate the opportunity to receive your forgiveness. Continue. Dear the soul of my message center, my heart chakra, I love you, honor you, appreciate you. You have the power to release your blockages, to further develop my intuition, to further develop my ability to hear heaven's guidance. Do a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so now we place our palms uh, in prayer position and let us thump our chest in the sternum area with the sound power ah. Eyes closed, just nice and relaxed. Ah. It doesn't have to be hard, but enough to vibrate the area. <coughs> ah. Ah. Uh... 
another minute. Uh, Place your palms like this, where your pinkies are touching and your thumbs are touching, and you can drop a cup in between your palms. Now bring your palms back in front of your heart center, and you can still drop a cup between your palms. Keep your eyes closed, gently relax. Visualize from heaven a golden healing ball. See it in heaven and it's starting to come closer. Still a ways away, but it's coming closer. It's a very bright golden healing ball. This golden light ball is heaven's light ball. It carries heaven's frequency. And as it comes even closer, it's quite large, but it is condensing down so that it can go inside your message center. It is not limited by time and space or your body. And it comes all around you. This golden light ball completely surrounds you. And it condenses down to the size of your heart chakra and the center of your chest. See this golden light ball inside your heart center. This heavenly frequency of love and light. Notice what direction this light ball is spinning. Notice how bright this golden light is. divine golden healing ball. See this golden light ball and ask it to spin a little bit faster. And as it does, notice it gets brighter and brighter. This golden light ball in your heart chakra is purifying and clearing blockages. Brighter and brighter it becomes. Notice the speed it is spinning at. Zzz, 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 brighter, brighter, zzz, 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 brighter, 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 zzz, 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 brighter, 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 brighter. There is nothing that cannot be purified by this heavenly ball. It is so bright. And watch as it expands to the size of your chest. Zzz, zzz, brighter, brighter, zzz, zzz, clearing blockages, releasing pain, releasing sorrow, releasing anger, brighter, brighter, zzz, zzz, brighter, 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 zzz, zzz. it's just pushing out everything. Brighter, brighter, releasing fear, releasing worry. Brighter, brighter, watch it spin. And now expand this golden light ball to the size of your body. See it spinning, clearing blockages all the way through the whole body, along your back, your spine, your neck, clearing blockages in your brain, clearing blockages in your eyes, clearing blockages in your neck. Zzz, zzz, brighter, brighter, clearing the blockages. Now bring it back down to the size of your heart. Shrink it back down. Zzz. Brighter, 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 very bright, more condensed. See it spinning. Zzz, zzz. Now expand it back to the size of your body. Zzz. The size of your body. Now it's spinning again, clearing blockages. Every time it expands, shoves out the old. Zzz, zzz, zzz. 
This golden light ball is clearing blockages, allowing heaven to serve you. And now expand it outside your body to the size of your room. Notice how big the golden light ball is. It's blessing your cats. It's blessing your dogs. It's blessing your bed. It's blessing your office. It's blessing whatever room you are in. This golden light, it's giving love to everything in the room. Watch the brightness. And now bring it back into your heart center. Spinning, spinning, brighter, brighter, spinning, spinning, brighter, brighter. Now expand it back to your room. It's as big as your room. See it spinning, clearing blockages. Each time you expand out, push, it pushes out anything that is not of value to you. Bring it back to the size of your heart center. See it spinning, brighter, brighter, brighter. Let's get ready to push it out. Push. Pushing out all the old. Your heart center is much bigger and brighter now. Notice how big and bright your heart center is now. This golden light ball the size of your room. Now we're going to give our light to all humanity. We're going to share our light and our love. Open our hearts past the size of your room. Share your love. Send your love to the animals outside, to the birds and the trees outside. Send your love to the air that serves you. Send your love to the clear, fresh water that serves you. This love passes the people on the streets in the neighborhood. This love expands out to all of your city. Expand your heart. Expand your love to all of those in the neighborhood. Expand, expand, expand. Go to your state and your country. Give your love to all of the people of the country. All of the plants, the trees, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers, the ocean. Give your love. Expand your heart. Now all around you are hundreds and hundreds of beings of light and they are so grateful they're expanding their love with you and so together you expand your love to the entire country you're in. People are turning their heads going, wow, that feels so amazing. I feel love right now. I wonder where that's coming from. Your heart expands past your state, past your country, into the next state, into the next country. Expand your heart. Expand your love. Send your love unconditionally to all souls, just as the beings of light do, just as beloved Jesus does, just as beloved Buddha does, just as beloved God does. Expand your light to all souls. Continue to expand past the oceans, See your love. You are the epicenter expanding your heart all across the entire globe. Our love is crossing each other. We are all over the globe. My love is crossing your love. Your love is crossing mine. Together we are creating love. Expand your heart. Now go to all of Mother Earth. Give your love to beloved Mother Earth. She feeds and nourishes you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, beloved Mother Earth. Offer your gratitude. Now expand your love to the oceans, the fish, the dolphins, the whales, the coral reefs. Everything receives your love. Nothing gets missed. Expand your heart. Now reach out past Mother Earth and go into space. Expand your love. There are many stars, planets, galaxies, and universes that wish to receive love as well. Expand your heart center to include stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. There are souls in all universes that are so happy to receive your love. Feel their love. Feel the love of all of those that received your love. Feel the love of all of those that received your love. Feel the love of the sun, the moon, and Mother Earth. They're so grateful for your love. 
start to gently bring this back with you. From all the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, gather the love, gather the golden light, happier, brighter, more love, gather the love, come back to Mother Earth, billions of souls with so much gratitude and love for your sharing of your love. The whales, the dolphins, the oceans, the mountains, rivers, streams, birds, animals, so grateful for your love. Millions and millions of humans, so grateful for your love. Gather the love. Bring it back to the size of your country. It's much bigger and brighter now. So much bigger, brighter, more pure. All this love, gather it. Bring it back to the size of the city that you're in. It starts condensing down in this golden, brilliant golden light ball. So much brighter and filled with love than before. So much brighter. And gather it down. Bring it back to the size of your city. Gather it down. Brighter, brighter. Gather it down to the size of your house or apartment or building you're in. Bring it down. Brighter, brighter, more condensed. Brighter, brighter. Bring it to the size of your room. And just notice it in the size of your room. Look at how bright and beautiful and happy, grateful, loving this golden light bulb is. All of the love in there. They're so grateful to you for sharing your love. Now you have to receive it. So you need to open your heart really big and bring this golden light bulb filled with all this love into your hearts. Bring it in, down to the size of your body, down to the size of your heart chakra. It's filled completely, your heart chakra. You are now pure and ready to receive high level intuition messages. You can ask at this time for a message from heaven. When you ask, ask them to give it to you one word at a time. Silently, dear heaven, I love you. Dear the source, my beloved creator, I love you. Can you please give me a message for my soul journey at this time? I am extremely grateful. Thank you. And just wait. Receive the words one at a time. For most of us, it could be very simple. I received the words, I love you. Do not minimize what is heard. It is a reminder of who we are. It is a reminder of our connection to Source. It is a reminder that we live in the 1% but believe it's the 99%. The more we attune, the more we return to that which we are from. Uh, when you are ready, you may share anything you wish, including what this experience was like for you, the wisdom that can assist you with building your intuition, what may serve you there, the message you received, you can share that if you wish. Welcome Sui Sop, welcome Monica. Thank you, Donnie Rollins. <clears throat> so, as I wait for your responses, in conclusion, in order to build our intuition, we need to be responsible in multiple ways. One is by being more conscious, taking time 
every day to do a little meditation, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes. For those of us that have difficulty getting into a very quiet space easily, it is important to uh, surround yourself with higher frequencies. And you can do that through very specific beautiful music. The music I'm recommending is Master Shah's music because it carries high frequencies. And one only needs to listen to it for 5-10 minutes uh, in a meditative space before they realize that. <coughs> also, offering our food and our drink to all the beings of light, our Heaven's team, our soul, our Creator, throughout the day keeps us in that higher frequency. These are constant things that put us in a position where when information is given to us through our intuitional channels, through our spiritual channels, we are able to hear it because we are being conscious of our frequencies. We are disallowing negativity to enter our field. The third suggestion was to remain in a place of gratitude regardless of the conditions <clears throat> and to uh, always choose a response uh, from a place of gratitude, even if it appears to be something that would normally create a negativity. This allowing us to maintain control of our mental emotional bodies and this allowing us to receive higher wisdom through our intuition, thereby not making uh, wrong choices from an emotional place that's not going to serve us or a mental irritation that's not going to serve us. Because we must remember we are creators of our reality and so if we are not conscious and staying in a place of gratitude then we are creating something that we're not going to want to be spending much time in in the future. <clears throat> and then finally, do a practice like this because it opens your heart and clears the blockages. Our message center is called a message center because this is where we receive messages. So in order to receive our messages, we have to spend time clearing these blockages. So there are through the day practices and there are uh, specific practices you can do in a meditative state once a day like this one that will serve you well to keep your channels open and hear uh, clear messages and also when you do practices like this and be grateful and uh, honoring you are holding a frequency in your own field that disallows at least uh, will strongly disallow um, negative messages from coming in from beings that are not here to serve uh, from the light side. So let's read some of uh, some of these responses. Donnie says, beautiful and great timing, Roz, a leap of faith. Thank you for sharing. Janice says she became dizzy, very warm, sweating message. Uh, the message was you are being served by many beings in the white light. Beautiful message, clear message. Deborah Anderson, she loves meditating. It clears her mind of clutter. Uh, Kristen says, sounds a little silly maybe, but she saw a big, fluffy, illuminated heart shape, gold and pink. That sounds just like you, Kristen. And Monica says, feeling a little fatigued, but she heard you are <clears throat> more loved than you realize. Never forget or doubt that. Uh, and he says, I know you doubt this time. This is the divine. Beautiful message. Probably very accurate. It's important to realize that when we're in these very uh, clean, high-frequency, relaxed states, the messages can be very clear. Intuition is loving and supportive. When we are getting the way to verify if the message is of value to us, is it loving? Is it supportive? Does it assist you moving forward on your soul journey? If you get yes, 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 it is a correct message. Uh, Kathy Arnold, too many words from heavens to share. We are all one. Divine love, peace, harmony, continue to serve all souls. We appreciate and love you all. Wonderful. So Kathy receives novels. Nerman says, wow, Master Paul, this practice is very powerful. Heaven gave us a huge blessing with the golden ball. Her message was that she saw a heart and Heard the words, go forward. Thank you so much. Yes, you are very welcome, Nerma. And thank you everybody for taking the time to share and to be with me today on this live stream. So I look forward to serving and moving forward. Uh, I will be opening up a 52-week 
self-healing program. So for those that want to uh, self-heal their physical body, their emotional body, their mental body, their spiritual body. Uh, I'll, I will be working through Master Shah's books one by one, <clears throat> doing the individual practices with anyone that joins this program. It's going to start, uh, I believe, May 13. I'll be starting out with advertisements in the very near future here, and you can join that. It'll be very, very affordable. Uh, it's, it's not meant to be an expense. It's meant to be a service and uh, help you to understand more about how to bring healing to yourself. So I look forward to serving you then. I will be back uh, on Tuesday, uh, three hours after the start time from this one. So Tuesday is always 12 noon Hawaii time. Thursdays is 9 a.m. Hawaii time. Those are my time slots now. So I look forward to seeing you then. And so let's offer our gratitude to all the beings of light. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our beloved Creator, all layers of divine Tao and Source, all of our spiritual mothers and fathers, heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, all the beings of light, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes that came to serve here today. We truly love you and we appreciate you and thank you from our heart and soul. We ask that each and every time that we call upon you, that if possible you come to service and guide us so that we uh, continue to grow on our soul journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye, everybody.